Hi everyone, I'm Kira, and I am so excited to be talking to you as part of STEM Clubs Week. To get us started, why don't I tell you a little bit about me? So I grew up in Dublin, in Ireland, but now I live in England and I work as a lecturer in engineering at the University of Manchester. As a lecturer, my job has two main parts. So the first part of my job is that I get to teach university students how to be spacecraft engineers. So how to design spacecraft and design and plan our future space missions. And the second thing that I get to do as part of my job is that I also get to investigate new exciting ideas for space missions and try and figure out how we can make them actually happen. So the three best things about my job are, number three, I get to travel all over the world and meet engineers from lots of different countries as part of my job. I have been lucky enough to live and work in five different countries, including the USA, the Netherlands and Germany. Number two, I have got to meet and learn from four different astronauts as part of my studies to become an engineer. And number one, the best thing about my job is that I have got to work on three different spacecraft and one of them is currently in orbit, zooming above our head about 800 kilometers up with my name engraved on the side. That is a career highlight that I think is going to be difficult to top. So speaking of spacecraft flying above our heads, how many spacecraft do you think are actually in orbit around our Earth right now? Have a think. Turn to the person next to you and have a guess. I'll wait. Have you had a guess? What do you think? So the truth is that there are more than 2,000 active spacecraft currently orbiting our Earth, taking pictures, sending messages, and doing experiments. Now, I don't know about you, but I think that 2,000 spacecraft sounds like an awful lot of spacecraft. But actually, I also think it's really hard to imagine what that means, even when you see a picture. So I'm going to try and help you imagine what 2000 spacecraft look like by imagining what they might look like if we could see them from here on Earth, because that's where we live after all. So this video is going to show you all of the spacecraft that we could see flying above our heads. Every green dot represents one spacecraft. And this is what you would see if you stood outside the University of Manchester and looked up for one whole hour. Pretty incredible, right? So what are all these spacecraft actually doing? Well, they are doing lots of different things. Some of them are taking pictures of our Earth. Some of them are monitoring the weather so that we know whether we need to bring a raincoat when we head outside. Some of them are even helping the banks to work so that we can pay for things when we're out shopping. Now, unfortunately, I do not have time to tell you what every single one of those 2,000 spacecraft are doing. So instead, I'm just going to tell you about two of my favorite things that we can do with spacecraft today. So number one, did you know that we can actually see animals from space? I'm going to show you some satellite images and see if you can spot the animals in these pictures. So here's the first one. We've got a lovely island sitting in the middle of an ocean and these little brown dots all clustered up on it. Any ideas what these could be? Turn to the person next to you, have a quick guess. Maybe this picture will help you out. Now do you know? 
These are walruses. Absolutely, these are walruses and we can see them in an image taken from space, all lounging on an island in the sun. Okay, here's the second one. Have a look at this picture, at the image in the top left. Any idea what these animals could be? Have a guess. Maybe this will help you out. They're whales. I think this picture is absolutely amazing. If you look really closely, you can even see the little fins, the little tails on the back of these animals. I think it's just incredible. Okay, last one. This one's a bit tricky. Maybe have a look at what the landscape looks like in this picture. That might help you out. What do you think we're seeing in this picture? Have a think, talk to the person next to you, maybe have a quick guess. So what do you think? This little picture might help you out a bit. This is penguins, but actually we can't quite see the penguins from space because they're a bit too small. But what we can see is penguin poo. So that's what you're seeing in the picture here. All of the brown marks on the white snow are the penguin poo. So it doesn't tell us exactly where the penguins are, but it does tell us where the penguins have been. So now that we know that we can see animals from space, why would we want to? Well, it's really important for us to be able to study animals all over the world from Africa to Antarctica, to be able to see where they are how many of them there are, are they moving around and migrating, particularly as our temperatures around the globe change because of climate change, we want to be sure that we can understand where these animals are, how they're adapting to deal with this changing climate and make sure that they're safe. Okay, so how does STEM help us to track animals from space? Well, in my job, I mostly use the M in STEM. I mostly use maths. So I'm going to give you an example now of how I might use some maths to plan a space mission to track animals from space. So let's imagine that we wanted to monitor a family of elephants in Africa. And we knew that every day at the same time, they would go to a particular lake to get some water. Let's imagine that we know that one spacecraft can take an image of that lake in Africa once a week. But we want to get an image of those elephants every single day. So how many spacecraft would I need to make sure that I could take a picture of those elephants every day? If you want, pause here, take some time to work it out, then come back and let's see how I did it. So we said that we wanted to take a picture of these elephants once a day. And we knew that one spacecraft could take an image every week. So how I would think about this is that there's seven days in a week. So that means that one spacecraft can take one picture in seven days. So if I want to take seven pictures in seven days, I'm going to need seven times as many spacecraft. Seven times one is seven. So I need seven spacecraft to make sure that I can get one picture every single day. Did you get the same answer? And here's a little secret about engineering. What we've just done using maths to solve a problem, that is engineering. So all of you now have just thought like an engineer and helped to solve a space problem. Okay, so the second thing I want to tell you about that we can do from space is that we can actually catch pirates. Something you might not know is that all of the ships that we have out at sea carry a beacon on board. This is a way of sending a signal back to the shore to let people know where the ship is and that it's safe. And when the ship is really far away from the shore, when it's out in the ocean, 
we can use spacecraft to pick up those signals and send them back down to the people on land so that they still know that ship is safe, even though it's far away from the land. And what happens is, is that if something goes wrong on the ship, for example, if it gets commandeered by pirates, one of the first things that those pirates will do is they'll switch off the beacon so that they can't be tracked. But the thing is, because that spacecraft is picking up those signals and sending them back to the land, if that signal vanishes, we'll know straight away that something has gone wrong and the team on the land can alert the rescue services and send help straight away to try and rescue that boat and capture those pirates. So how can STEM help us in this case? Well, if the ship is really far away from the shore, then it can take a bit of time for the signal to travel to the spacecraft and then for the spacecraft to be able to pass it back down to the people on the land. And so what we can do to make that faster and make sure that people collect those signals as quickly as possible is we can use lots of spacecraft to pass the signals along so that they can get to the ground straight away. And that means that if something goes wrong and pirates commandeer that ship, we don't have to wait to know that something has gone wrong. That signal will be passed along to the shore straight away and we'll know as soon as it gets cut off. So how does STEM help us? Well, let's imagine that we know that our ship is going to be a thousand kilometers away from the shore. Um, we know that every single one of our spacecraft can pass its signal 100 kilometers. Then how many spacecraft am I going to need to make sure that I can get the signal from my ship down to the land straight away? I'm going to let you pause here, take a little time to work it out, and then come back and I'll tell you how I would do it. Okay. So we said that our ship was going to be a thousand kilometers away from the shore and we knew that our spacecraft could pass the signal over a hundred kilometers. So how many spacecraft do we need to be able to pass that signal over that thousand kilometer distance? Well, if one spacecraft can pass the signal a hundred kilometers, then two spacecraft can pass the signal 200 kilometers three can pass it 300 kilometers. And if we keep going like that, then eventually we'll find that 10 spacecraft can pass that signal a thousand kilometers. So we would need 10 spacecraft to make sure that we could get that signal to land straight away. Or to think of it another way, if we know that we have to pass the signal a thousand kilometers, we could divide that by 100 kilometers to find out that we would need 10 spacecraft to fill that thousand kilometer gap. So here's the second secret of engineering. Often there are lots of different ways that you can choose to solve a problem. And it doesn't really matter which way you choose to use. The most important thing is that you can use the science and the maths that you've learned in the past to find an answer and to get the right solution. And as long as you can do that, you're thinking like an engineer. So now that you know more about what spacecraft engineering is, I hope that you think that it could be a really exciting career. And it's one that not many people know about. In fact, when most people think about space, they think about astronauts. So let me ask, how many of you would like to be an astronaut? I know I definitely wanted to be an astronaut when I was younger. But actually, the more I learned about spacecraft and the amazing things that they do for us on Earth every single day, the more I decided that actually I didn't want to be an astronaut anymore. Instead, I wanted to be able to help design and build these spacecraft that do amazing things and help us here on Earth. Now, 
I think being an engineer is the best job in the world. I get to tackle new exciting challenges every single day and work on the most exciting technologies. But if engineering isn't for you, that's okay. There are lots of different jobs in the space industry, from the doctors who help to make sure that our astronauts are safe and healthy in space, to the lawyers who make sure that we can launch our spacecraft safely and correctly amongst all the other different countries who are working in space, through to the people who look at the satellite imagery and tell us what it means, and the people who actually build the spacecraft, who put all of those little pieces together and make sure that it's going to work perfectly when we launch it into orbit. So, if you are excited about space, then keep being excited, keep working hard, keep dreaming, and I am sure that there is a career in space for you in the future. Thanks so much for having me, and I hope you have a fantastic STEM Clubs week. Bye!